Good morning, folks. Hope you're awake because I'm going to throw a lot at you today. We've got Tier 1 science news of all kinds here this morning, but we are going to start with the quiet part, the sun, and the last 24 hours on our star. Yes, fairly quiet with no significant flares or Earth-side eruptions, minor coronal holes only, and yet there is a resurgence of proton bombardment, far side blasts, and solar flare risk rising as the second half of the week unfolds. Let's get to those concerns now. Starting with the fact that there is certainly reason to keep watch. Not only do we have a modestly sized and complex active region crossing center disk here, but there are incoming spots and a brand new one in development and growing quickly. This growth is in less than the last 24 hours, and if it gets any bigger, its flare risk is going to surge. Got big incoming spots behind it as well at the limb, so enjoy this quiet on the sun while it lasts. It's notable that a sun diving comet came in, burned up on approach last night, this Kreutz family comet brightened significantly on its approach before fizzling in the upper corona, and right where it entered on the far side, a big CME erupted early this morning. Now, while the CME is aimed away from Earth, the plasma followed the magnetic fields of the Parker spiral, and it is raining protons down on Earth's polar region once again. It's the second ramp up on the right side of the chart here. By the way, the larger proton storm on the left from the X-flare several days ago was the largest proton storm since 2017. Moving on to the articles, good expose on the Weather Channel here, highlighting new research about an ultra-smooth segment of the Cascadia Fault off the Washington coastline. They say it's got a vastly higher megaquake risk than they realized. Tsunami-level event is going to happen there, eventually. Excellent paper up next, explaining how Jupiter likely plays a role in the sunspot cycle timing and amplitude, including for extreme events like Grand Solar Minimum. Always good to see scientists confirming the planetary forcing on the sun. Quick note, last night we included the sunfish beachings in the navigational issues list of the magnetic pole shift, and while sunfish are found everywhere, this specific species is only found in the southern hemisphere, or at least that used to be the case. So for those talking about how seeing sunfish all the time made this story uninteresting, that's like finding a polar bear in Tennessee and saying, that's not weird, I see black and brown bears all the time. These southern hemisphere sunfish have only been spotted in this unusual location since the 2006 magnetic anomaly and shift acceleration. Outstanding paper up next. Does a total atmosphere look and finds all the warming since 2002? is actually at the polar regions. No significant trends since 2002 outside the Arctic and Antarctic, and they also predict a full reversal of the climate trend. In fact, they say it has already begun will unfold over the coming years. We've also got professors from Princeton and MIT suggesting that net zero policies are not going to do much of anything but strip freedom and crash the economy. They describe it as the quintessential all pain, no gain proposition. Then again, the power grab and climate was always about money and control, not the weather. Last but not least, it is confirmed that human kidneys probably would not survive the trip to Mars due to cosmic radiation. This is not just relevant for Elon Musk's pipe dream, but for everyone on Earth as Earth's magnetic field weakens in the ongoing pole shift, letting more and more of that cosmic radiation into the Earth system. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.